Hi, today's video is talking about how to be yourself in a world that always wants you to be someone else. I'm Nyla Harris and I am a life strategist, a business consultant and speaker who works with growing and transitioning entrepreneurs and professionals to pursue their passion with a plan by gaining clarity, setting goals and getting things done. And today's video is difficult because how can I talk to you about how to be yourself? You know you, only you know how to be yourself. The problem is we go out into the world either at work or on social media even within our own personal relationships and friendships, expectations are put on us to be someone else and it becomes more difficult to be just who you are. And I talk about embracing your unicorn and embracing your horn and, and your unicorn horn and simply just being who you are and that's difficult. So today's video is a little different from my typical videos where I walk through a list of what to do and how to do it and, and those steps. Because I wanna have more of a discussion and I wanna hear from you, first of all, just talking about what it feels to move in this world that seems to constantly be on display. Funny as I'm talking to you about that on a video, but we scroll through Instagram or we scroll through LinkedIn and we try to remember that we're looking at other people's highlight reels while we're internally feeling not good enough or this lack of confidence. And I talk about the fears of factor and the factors of fear and the factors of foolishness. And one of the factors of fear is related directly to this, and it is our self-image, our confidence or lack thereof. I talked in another video about imposter syndrome and some steps that you can take to overcome that. If you missed that, please take a look at my page and look for that video. But imposter syndrome is this feeling that we don't belong in the places or the spaces that we're in. Even if we've clearly earned that job or we've clearly earned admission into a university or we've earned some sort of accolade, we still feel as if we're not enough. Even though other people have bestowed that upon us, we look to you, tear it down and disparage it. And where does that come from? Where do these self-limiting beliefs come from? And one of the things that I talk about in combating lack of confidence and in combating imposter syndrome is to embrace your unicorn or simply just be the unicorn. Be unique, simply is what I mean by being the unicorn. Flaunt your horn. Be who it is that you were born to be because you were put on and designed on this earth for a specific reason. And no matter what the stress or the pressure is to be or act or behave as someone else, it's taking away from the world when you do that. Now, that's not to say that we can't adapt to our environments or adapt to our culture or our team, but we shouldn't allow our cultures or teams or environments to adapt us. We adapt to them to the point where we're comfortable. And when we're no longer comfortable, we should leave that environment. So one of the things that we hear a lot about as unicorns, we when we stand out, we get a lot of pressure to be like everyone else, be like the herd. So we might hear terms like uh, we're intimidating or can't you just be like everyone else? Can't you be like so-and-so? I actually did receive feedback once that in written feedback in a review that listed the names of two other people on the team and the feedback was simply to observe them and be like them. Kid you not. And when I pressed a little bit more and I asked for more information to find out, well, what specifically, what two or three things are they doing that you would like me to integrate into what I do? I cannot be them. I do not want to be them. I'm Niall. I'm open to feedback and I'm open to being more uh, who I need to be in terms of the work performance or work product, but I'm just simply me. And this is who I was born to be. And it's hard to tell you that. And if you're watching this video, uh, you might be thinking, yeah, Niall, great. 
how do I be that? How do I still get ahead in work or still feel loved in a relationship, in my family, in a friendship, if I'm not being who they want me to be? And what is the difference between balancing out that give and take. There is some natural give and take that has to happen. You can't just be you all of the time and expect the other person or the other people on the other end to just accept it. They also need space to be them. And how do you create that space? So first, just dealing with confidence and recognizing that if you are scrolling through Instagram, for example, and you are seeing people posting how wonderful their lives are, remember and think about how wonderful your own life is. Think about the things that you have accomplished. Write them down. I always tell people, write down your accomplishments, just like you would with a resume. Rewrite your resume if you know that's what it takes. But think about what are the things that you have accomplished or remind yourself of that. Write it down because it's a different thing. It's a different mind connection when you take time to actually write it down and then you see it. And also post that on LinkedIn or post it on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. Don't forget to post your own highlight reels because you are amazing. And it's not for everyone else to also tell you that you're amazing and they will, but it's for you to connect within yourself how great you are and your own accomplishments are just as good and just as valid as everyone else's. Another way to help combat a lack of confidence uh, or um, this imposter syndrome and again, embrace you being a unicorn and being unique is to get yourself um, a theme song and a theme song that works for you in really expresses who you are as a person. I've had several theme songs over my life. When I was applying to business school, it was the song called Win by Brian McKnight. And it was exactly what I needed right when I needed it. And it encouraged me to keep going through the business school application process and interview process, which could be grueling, but I still did it. Right now, my theme song is Legends Are Made. And it's about basically just digging in, working hard, that grit, that hustle, got to keep going. And in the morning, sometimes when I don't feel like getting up and facing the day or making a video, I do it because that's how legends are made. Uh, so theme song and reiterate for yourself a lot of times who you are, what you've done, what you accomplished, and what you're grateful for in this world. Second, this little tip is a little bit more practical that I'm gonna say. Write down what your superpowers are, but start with your skills. What are the just your basic skills that you're good at? I'm good at organization, I'm good at problem solving, I, you know, I'm good at some basic things that I wouldn't necessarily call my superpower, and right? I wouldn't say that they bring me happiness or passion, but, I'm good at them. They're good skills to have. They help me do and perform work and you know better than some or not better than some depending on who um, I'm comparing myself with. And and uh, that's going to be number 3 by the way. But uh, think about those things that you do well. Then kick it up a notch. What are those things that bring you joy? You not don't think about yet whether you're good at them or not, but think about the things that bring you joy. Like taking pictures or photography is something that brings me joy. I've taken pictures all over the world and I put those pictures up in, on my walls in my house and I post them and I've made photo books and I, that just brings me joy to be able to go and capture moments. Uh, not necessarily something I would want to do as a job, but I really do enjoy capturing moments, experiences, and that does actually feed into my superpower a little bit. But my real superpower is strategy to execution. It is taking the big idea and getting clarity around it, deciding where we're going, how we're gonna get there, what are the resources that we need, and then switching into tactical execution. It's not really that exciting, but I love it. That's my jam, it's my superpower. I tell people a couple of things to, to explain what I do. 
I say, you know, I'm not somebody who would have come up with Uber, but I am somebody who can make Uber manifest. I am someone who can take what's in the, the blue sky person's mind and, and create it and make it tangible and bring it through to execution. And I love it. That brings me joy in a way to take something from to create out of, of nothingness. So that's my superpower and I really enjoy it. I do that by using my skills of organization, my skills of questioning, my skills of um, curiosity and problem solving. And people will, I will ask questions and people will, I can see them thinking and kind of going through their minds. But why are you asking me this? What is the purpose of this question? And then all of a sudden I will say something and it, you'll see this flash across their face and they're like, oh, I see how you got there. How did you do that? How did you see that? I'm always looking at different perspectives. And that comes from my experience, having been in multiple functions and having been in multiple industries. One of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes, and this isn't gonna be verbatim, but one of the things that he talked about is creativity comes from being able to connect dots that otherwise wouldn't be connected. It comes from having different experiences and people who can draw from those experiences and connect those dots, that's what creativity is. That's what Steve Jobs talked about. And he said one of the more disappointing things is that people don't have that creativity anymore. They don't have those experiences anymore to have that level of creativity. Part of that is because we've sort of been locked into a culture of uh, stepwise progression. Even if you're in corporate America or if you're not in corporate America, unless you work for yourself, you've always worked for yourself, even in schools, there's this sort of notion in our world today that we declare a major and we go through our lives trying to be that thing. And even after we graduate from school, we say, I wanna be in marketing. And then we go through our lives from the time we start our first job to the time that we retire, trying to be that vice president of marketing and trying to go in a stepwise fashion. But some people who are like me are multi-potentialites. We are good at multiple things and I am good at bringing things together that probably have nothing to do with one another, but will manifest into something potentially awesome and then execute whatever that is. So all of that to say, that's how you can figure out your superpower. So think about what you're good at, what brings you joy, and what is it that you do better than anyone else? What is your competitive advantage? What is your personal value proposition? That is your uniqueness. That is your unicornness, if you will. Number three, and I sort of did this and I caught myself and you caught me caught catching myself, is comparison. Number three, don't compare yourself to others. The only person that you should compare yourself to is the person that you see in the mirror. You are your competition. Be better than you were yesterday, last month, last year, five years ago. You're only choosing to compare yourself to others when it makes sense. And by that, I mean, if you are in, if you work in a, a, a team or a specific industry where you have to be compared to others in a way to get promotions or in a way to get rated, uh, that sort of thing. And, and you wanna also benchmark. And I think that's really what I'm trying to say. You wanna compare yourself only in a way to benchmark where you are versus where some other folks are. And if you are behind some other folks, quote unquote behind, don't look at it as a negative. Don't think of it that way. You have some skill sets or some gaps in your skills that you're identifying and that's information. So fill that information gap by doing whatever professional or personal development you need to do. But in doing that, also figure out, this is also part of figuring out who you are. When you only look at yourself and how you're doing and who you wanna be and where you are now, that's how you get to determine and decide, well, what are some of those professional and personal things that I wanna do? I have a personal development curriculum. 
as opposed to a professional development plan or individual development plan of a personal Nile de development curriculum. And it's about watching documentaries or getting information, learning new skills. I love learning new things and taking online courses or live courses. I tried to learn Italian once. It didn't go that well. However, I'm open to all of the information. I'm a constant learner. I'm curious. And I, I remember receiving some feedback once in a 360 that uh, the person wished I was more curious. And it, it was so interesting because I was always going around talking to people and learning about what they did in their jobs and how that impacted their lives and how what I do and the decisions I make impact their lives. And uh, it really made me a better person and, and a better worker. And I've really felt that this person gave me this feedback because I wasn't necessarily curious about what they did. Again, you're going to get feedback as a unicorn, as somebody who em embraces the path less taken, because frankly, other people want to take the path too. And they're looking at you and how courageous you are and how wonderful and brave you are for being who you are. And it's hard. And sometimes it's not easy, but we do it anyway. So that three is, you know, don't compare yourself. Be, be who you are and improve on who you are. But benchmark where necessary if you are trying to get to a certain level in your career or personally, if you're, you know, it's it's good, for example, what I mean by benchmark, if I, if you still don't get what I'm saying, if you're a runner, for example, and you want to get to um, a 10 miles, 10 minutes per mile, and you're currently at 12 minutes per mile, look at what other people are doing who've reached that target that you're trying to get to. What's their workout regimen? What's their nutritional regimen? What are you, doing, what are you not doing, what do you need to improve on? That's when you should be benchmarking and that's the type of comparison that you should be doing. Look at people who already are where you wanna be, identify your gaps and move toward that. And in that process, you actually might find out that that's not even what you're interested in doing. So number four in trying to figure out who you are versus who the world wants you to be. And this might be a bit of a struggle for a lot of people. And I'm talking to my Gen Xers and, and Zennials uh, right now a little bit because this is the generation that's middle-aged, if you will, or approaching middle age, if you will. And I did have a video talking about this stage of life this mid right midlife crisis, if you will, that just doesn't exist. I don't believe in the midlife crisis in the way that it's portrayed. When we get to a certain stage in life, and I, in this video I talk about it, and I'll put the link in below um, in the comments, but uh, I talk about when we get to midlife, there's a natural stage if you um, look at um, Buddhism, um, there's a natural stage midway through life for us now where we reflect back on life. But when the practice was first uh, first developed, it was more toward the end of someone's life. So this is the part of our lives where wisdom is starting to bubble up and we're starting to reflect and we're starting to wonder and we're starting to think about who am I? And it's perfectly natural. I did it. Other people did it. The What makes it a crisis is the reaction to it. If you have a bad reaction, if you just wander off and go off into the, the forest or you start really changing your behaviors and, and really just becoming not just something that you don't recognize or your friends and families don't recognize and it's not intentional toward anything, that's a crisis. But at midlife at this point, and again, it's the Gen Xers, the Xennials are coming up really close behind and the Xennials are, are this group that is a, a combination between the Millennials and Gen X and Gen X already feels quite uh, you know overlooked it's the smallest generation it's the sandwich generation and frankly we, we kind of got skipped in terms of you know, at work and coming up and right now gen xers are starting 
to look at starting their own businesses and they're really thinking about who am I, what do I want? And I recommend leaning into that. Lean it. There's no easy way to figure out who you are, by the way, except to figure out who you are. Lean into that process, meditate, really explore, because right now we're in this stage of um or I know, and it is uh, one of the final stages of kind of reaching consciousness, or it is actually the final stage of reaching constant consciousness. So our experiences and our wisdom are starting to rise, and we're asking perfectly good questions. And have new experiences. Self-education is fabulous. It's wonderful. Read more. Do new experiences. Bring other people in the journey with you so it doesn't seem so much like a crisis to the people around who are observing you. Millennials. If you are feeling like, gosh, who am I? The millennials, and I'm and I'm putting the Xennials with the Gen Xers, and the Zen uh, the millennials, what I'm really talking about is you kind of grew up in a different atmosphere, a lot more exposure to social media, a lot of turbulence in terms of economics and politics. And it's really a bit hard to figure out sometimes where you belong. The world wasn't the same for you coming out of college that it was for, or even coming out of high school, that it was for Xennials and Gen Xers or baby boomers or the greatest generation. You've been probably the more exploratory, go out in the world, make your way, started lots of businesses and have really sort of changed the face of American life in, in many ways. And in some ways you've been sort of, uh, put into a category into a basket of oh you millennials you know you want this or life is really easy for you and you can struggle because you're probably the most impacted generation when it comes to social media and what you see on social media and it can be difficult to to be happy and embracing who you are and if you're not a, you know, a size negative two or you're not this or you're not that or you know um and it's okay be who you are, explore, like I said before, explore the things that bring you joy, the things that you're good at, what's your superpower, and bring yourself into every place that you go and it becomes easier and you're going to, you're a step behind um, the I know and you're really in this place of kind of sorting through information. So I encourage you to keep sorting through all of that information that you get about the world and about who you are and the things that you like but you know also like write down things journal meditate and and for the the gen zers who and i work with some high school students now and they're very interesting in the way that they see the world they are at least the group that i work with i i haven't met a whole lot but the group that i work with they are very interesting in that they're sort of nostalgic for a time they never experienced. They said to me, or one of them said to me, Niall, can we, it would be cool to have milkmen again. And it would be, I don't want to have my phone. I don't want it to always be available. Why do we always have our phones available? Why is it necessary to, to always have texts and all these things available? And I pointed out to this, uh, to this young woman, this is all you know. That's why you don't think there's life without it because you've never experienced life without it. And she was like, oh, wow. So for, for my Gen Zers, you know, you're, you're young and I recommend you exploring the world in, in the way that you can um, in, in possible um, because as you graduate from high school, go off to college, and then start entering the workforce. And a lot of you are, have already started entering the workforce. It, we're now a four-generation workforce. And it's going to be difficult to kind of figure out what your space is in there. And that's okay. Try different things. I did when, when I was young. I tried different things. I actually started my career in securities trading in Chicago, Chicago Board of Trade, Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Um, I was an analyst 
for for a hot second, it wasn't for me. I eventually found what was for me, which was healthcare and medical device and biotech and life sciences and also K-12 education. And my, my personal mission, and this is number five, what is your mission? What is your vision for your life? If you don't know what it is, figure it out, condense it down. For me, my mission is to help close the health, wealth, and education disparity gap in America. And I, one of the ways I wanna do that is by helping people and empowering them and enabling them with resources and tools to pursue their passion, help them use my superpowers and my skills to help people pursue their passion with a plan. And their passion is whatever that passion is in terms of bringing that thing to the world that they were meant to bring. Folks can't do it alone. And that's my gift. And again, I like doing it. So so number five is what's your mission? What's your vision? What's the, the plan that you have for yourself? What What is it that when you reach the end of your life, you want to say you accomplished? Because we don't really regret the things that we did when we get to the end of our life. We regret the things that we didn't do. And I always promised myself that I wouldn't make a choice where I would end up regretting not doing it in the end. Then I do have one regret. And that one regret was I, I didn't go to the Navy when I wanted to uh, coming out of high school or, or when I was in college. And that was something I wanted to do. And I think about it. I don't have a huge regret about it. But it is something I think about and wonder about. And I promised myself I didn't want to get to the end of my life whenever that was. And hopefully that's years and years and years and decades from now. But I didn't want to get to the end of my life and be like, gosh, I wish I had started that life strategist consulting and speaking business. I wish I had um, done, gone and traveled to go see the Nile River. I wish I had done these things. So I, I try to do those things. So really that is, you know, that last thing is what is, what is your mission? What is your vision? What is, is it that you want to contribute to the world? And I want to say this, and I want to be perfectly clear entrepreneurship isn't the only path. And I know that that's really something that's very popular right now. And I want to tell you, it is not the only path to pursuing your passion. If you want to work and have a side hustle, if you want to work and you want to volunteer the rest of your time, that's perfectly acceptable. It is okay if you want to work. I don't feel this pressure to have to go out and do your own thing. That's why I work with entrepreneurs and professionals because both have a passion and both want to pursue it. And I work with people for the professionals really around, well, what is it if you're trying to get to that next level of your, your career, if you're really trying to understand, well, gosh, I don't want my whole life to be about career. I don't want it to also just be about my family. I love my family, but I want to do more. I want to be able to contribute. So we sit down and, and what does that look like? What does that experience look like for you? Is it working more in a nonprofit? Is it having a side hustle that you really enjoy or, or becoming a novice photographer, whatever that is, I want you to understand that it's okay in whatever way. What's not okay though is not acting because of fear. And I want to separate the two. It's okay to be fearful. It is okay to be like, I don't know if I wanna do that. It's not okay to not try something that you feel very passionate about because you think you might fail. You should fail. I fail, everyone fails because the failing is the learning. You learned how to walk by falling. You learned how to do a lot of things because you tried other things and it didn't work. When you were in school, you tried things, you didn't get the answer right, you tried again, you did get the answer right. It's okay to fail. It is these images on social media that have you thinking that it's not. Those, that's it. That, these are my five tips for how to discover who you are in a world that doesn't want you to be who you are, in a world that wants you to conform. You don't have to conform. Be the unicorn, flaunt your horn, be who you are, be who you want to be, and 
continue to you know explore and adapt and and love your life and grow and learn and it's all okay it really is it's really all gonna be okay